A story allows you to talk about the character's life and you can go into those things about grief and loneliness and you know isolation, those kinds of things, without exposing yourself too much. I'm Chris Crutcher. I write adolescent fiction mostly, and a lot of it is literature that comes out of my life as a child and family therapist when I was working with child abuse and neglect families. Um, before that, I was an educator. I worked as an alternative school. It, it shaped the subject material, for sure. And, um, and I think that it also shaped, it also shaped a lot of the, of the, I mean, the language that you use to tell your stories. I wrote my first book just as I finished my life in education, which was about 12 years, I guess. And then I started into the, into the uh, world as a, as a child and family therapist. And of course, I was hearing stories all the time as a therapist, and you, you can't take a story out of a therapy session and put it in a book without a really good lawyer and no ethics, but you hear one story, five stories, 50 stories, and those truths kind of float to the top, and that's what you use for your storytelling. Every story I've ever written came from something real. And I wrote it because it intrigued me, or it, it, I, I read it and I think, boy, more people need to know about this. And you can actually get more people to know about it, I think, writing it in fiction, because th there's a story there. I mean, it's not, you're not just hammering somebody with the facts. I just don't know anything that isn't, that isn't better talked about than not talked about. And I'm talking about the hardest stuff. I've worked with kids who've been in some really rough situations, and one of the things they say over and over again is, I just wanted somebody to know what it felt like. I wanted to know they knew what it felt like. And I've had kids, I've had kids come up to me and say, you know, I read Chinese Handcuffs, which is a story about a girl who'd been molested all her life, and I thought you knew me. And it was the first time I ever knew that anybody else knew this. All my books have been challenged or banned someplace, starting with the first one, which was Running Lewis which was almost banned in my hometown, actually. They've been banned because of language. They've been banned because of issues. They've been banned because um, just there are certain things that people think we don't want kids thinking about. In my work as a therapist, one of the things that I found most damaging in terms of child-parent relationships is this control issue. The fact that a parent thinks that they can control what their child thinks. If I'm a parent and I decide that you shouldn't read a book that has a girl who got pregnant and who wasn't married. Or you read a book that has a gay kid in it. Or you read a book that has some language in it that is really reflective of the, of the person. And the parent comes out totally against whatever that thing is. If that kid falls into that arena at some point, the last person they can go to is the person they should be able to go to first. And it takes you off the short list of people to turn to just like that because I'm not going to come tell you something that you hate. Whale Talk, I think, is probably the one so far that's been most banned. And it's about a, a biracial 17-year-old, I think, who's living in a, in a real homogeneous community, just real white. It's a story about good people having awful things in their lives, in their histories, that they're trying to you know, get some kind of redemption for. It always seems like a bridge to me for educators and, and kids to be able to find a place to talk about the things that both of them are concerned with. Anytime somebody n understands that there are other people in the same boat and that other people are surviving it, it lets you know that you have a chance. 